We're lucky enough today to be joined by not only Frankston's greatest basketball export, but one of Australia's greatest basketball exports, David Anderson, who of course has played uh, in four Olympic Games, uh, played in the NBA in the Euro League. He's back starring in the NBL. Um, he's got the FIBA Asia Cup coming up soon as well. Um, David, you've achieved a lot, but of course it all started in this stadium. When yep. you when you come back here, what are the memories? that are evoked by walking into this stadium? Good memories. I mean, I've had great times here. I still remember trying out for the Blues when I was a ripe age, I think of 10 or 11, and being amazed at one of my good mates, David Hankin, put the ball through his legs, and I was a big <laughs> gangly, you know, kid and could barely run up and down the floor, but obviously the coaches had some faith in me, uh, Ian Wilmot and um, his name, Matt God is dead. Uh, we, uh, you know, they had the faith, they put their trust in me and I, you know, wasn't a crazy good player when I was growing up as a Blues, but then just kept getting better and better with age. But this is where it all started, and I'm proud of my Franks and Heritage. What was it? What was it about the game of basketball that that hooked you? I mean, my brothers all played it, so we used to have backyard battles in my place in in uh, the Glen. So with all my three brothers, Brett, Stuart, and uh, Grant, we'd always be out there every summer night until the sun went down sometimes after it and just uh, playing against each other. You fall in love with the game there. And then I was playing three, four games a week, you know, over across the state. Parents would take me everywhere and it's just, you know, it just blossomed, you know, it was one of those things. I didn't expect to be a professional. I didn't expect to represent Australia. It just kind of happened as it did. And, you know, I just took every opportunity I could. Do you remember that, that first moment where you thought, <clears throat> you know what, I'm actually pretty good at basketball? I could be all right at this. I mean, it doesn't hit you like a lightning bolt, like, you know, an epiphany or anything. But, you know, I kind of realized as I got older and um, I suppose when they started talking about me going to AIS and playing with the with the Franks and Blues senior team then, you know, we called the Bayside Blues and we were, you know, amongst all the American guys and playing some good basketball and realizing that, you know, hey, there's, you know, there's a bit of opportunity here and just blossomed on, like I said, and went to AIS and then... You know, I didn't think I'd be a professional even when I went there, you know. Just was like, oh, yeah, I'll go here and have some yeah. fun and be away from home and maybe take it a bit seriously. And then it was like, you can go to college, you can be a pro. And I was like, wow, you know, kind of hit me. And I chose a professional path and yeah, it's paid off and the rest is history. I've been playing this game for many years. <laughs> and in 1999, you went to the World Junior Champs with yep. guys like um, Stephen Black and Rowdy Sheridan and Neil yep. Mottram. And I mean, a lot of water's gone under the bridge since then. Yeah. But at the time, that must have been a huge thing for you. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I just started playing pro then. And, you know, obviously playing with those guys, I played with them in the Albert Schweitzer tournament leading up to it. And at 16 years old, I represented Australia at that. But, um, yeah, that was kind of, you know, the, the step stones that brought me to where I am today, representing Australia. And, and then I was playing in Europe. And then, yeah, just kept carrying on like I said it was great you know to keep playing and doing what I'm doing even now at this age I'm really you know happy and proud and, and it's just a yeah it's a bit of a blessing too. It was a brave move to go to Europe as young as you did when you were still very much developing you still had the puppy feet yeah. going I mean what was it that that said to you right it's, it's time to make this move and go over to Bologna? I mean it was a huge contract so that kind of helped <laughs> but um, no they kind of poached me I suppose you could say they saw me playing with the Aussie team and I was on radars for the NBA then and and uh, my agents worked hard they got me this uh this big opportunity for your contract as a 18 year old so it was it was daunting I mean going to Italy no other Australian basketball I believe had ever been over in Italy or Europe for that stance you know for a big stint like this and you know I have European heritage so my auntie in Denmark was you know very adamant yes you can do it you'll have a great time we're going to organise things. You'll have a Danish, you'll have a Danish passport. We're going to have a good time. And um, yeah, I went across with my brother Stuart. So that was kind of, you know, a great thing. My parents asked Stewie to come along for the ride. Yeah. And we got him a gig as a, you know, kind of as a personal assistant with me. And he just helped me settle down and had that steady, you know, family support around me. So it was a, it was a big, big risk, but, you know, one that was not too, it was shared because it was with my brother and my family helped me a lot. And, you know, I made the most of the opportunity. And something Andre Lamanis talks about <clears throat> when I ask him about you is your level of professionalism in preparing your body. And yeah. he talks about the fact that you take the people that you trust over there in terms of your trainers and all yeah. that sort of stuff. I mean, tell us about that side of your game. Yeah, well, I mean, I, at a young age, I had to obviously invest in that side of the sport because 
I had really bad knees. I had a terrible back. I was, you know, struggling to get up and down the floor because I was a tall, gangly guy. My body was taking time to develop it. There, you put it under so much stress of playing every other night, training, smashing up against bigger, older guys. So I learned at the young age of 18 that I had to start doing more work off the court. And I got in touch with a guy named Bruce Gray, who works at Body World in Balaclava. Um, he taught me about strength work, getting, you know, getting the core strong, getting the back strong, getting the legs strong. That really helped. And I met another guy named Bowden Babacek through an Olympic teammate. And uh, he taught me about running, how to get my most out of my running technique, how to jump better, how to do a better job of, you know, utilizing what you've got raise my athletic ability up. And then I had another guy named Dominic Trimboli who helped me with my back because I always had issues with that. He's a Pilates expert. And basically these three guys helped me carry my body through those years when I was a bit tender. And I suppose I grew into my body. And then, yeah, it was an investment. I paid for them to come over. I paid for their time every day. They lived with me, you know, they shared meals. We went and ate every time. But these are great people, you know, they're exceptional trainers, probably the best in their business in their each field. But um, great people too. So we used to hang out. We had a great time together. And I've flown them all around the world, whether it be America, France, Italy, Spain, Russia. You know, they came and visited me everywhere I went. And it was an investment for me. It was like, you know, some people say, well, we'll just spend that money on that when you can be blind cars or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And was it Andrew Bogart who said that? No, nah, <laughs> he loved his cars, but he's invested in it too. He has yeah. traders. So, but I said it's an investment. You know, you pay, you know, five or 10,000 for these guys to come and visit you for a couple of weeks you know, with all the things and it pays off. You know, at the end of the day, you might get another year out of, out of your deal, you might get another year out of your career. And obviously it's still working because I'm here I am still playing after two decades of basketball. Absolutely. Now, not everyone can fly guys around the, the world or whatever. Yeah, it's hard, but, but I mean... But your yeah. advice to young people is to really take that side of things seriously. Yeah, be professional. I and mean, You know, your body is your temple. So if you can master that and know like what you have to do to get up to be in the right position to play your best basketball every night you're gonna you know have opportunities to do the best thing you can and it's you know and they teach me they motivate me these guys you know when i was down i broke my ankle a lot of people said probably never come back from it Bowden would be working with me day and night we'd be doing track sessions in the pouring rain you know in the middle of winter and you know you don't want to be out there doing that and he's out there with me pushing me doing 100 meter sprints and working on the grass or, you know, my body's all sore and I don't feel like waking up, I'd be up there with Bruce in the gym at 6.30 in the morning, pumping out leg weight squats and nearly throwing up on the leg press. And so these kind of things, they push your barriers, but it makes you tougher as a person. Now, four Olympic Games, and yeah. Andre Lamana said, you wouldn't be surprised if it's five in 2020. I mean, <laughs> Oh, what? that's good, yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> what, like that. Uh, and he's the guy that counts after all. But what, um, what, what stands out from those four Olympics? I mean, obviously, the recent one was great. You know, we had an unbelievable bunch of guys. And uh, obviously, being around it a bit, I could kind of, you know, embrace it a bit more. But it was all about basketball, this last one. I mean, we barely had a day off. It was, we played from the first day to the last day. And it was a great experience. Like I said, the basketball was awesome. You know, it was all great. Out of all the best ones to go to, like, in terms of the village and all the other bits to go with it, probably London was the most organised and great place had a you know center of big uh, shopping center across the way which you could go and meet family and have a good time um but yeah each one was unique the first one athens was like a bit of a blur for me because it's just so exciting and everything so but it's been great you know i'm truly amazed that i got to fall i think everyone in my tight circle never thought that would happen and even saying that you know i'm kind of throwing around the goal of tokyo 2020 and and seeing what could possibly come from that. But um, yeah, it's never off. And I'm just uh, yeah, still a bit, I have to pinch myself sometimes to believe the truth. Absolutely. So between you know, all your time in the Euro League, four Olympics, I think two World Cups. Yeah, um, I think I've been two. And the NBA, like, yeah. you know, who are the opponents that you've had to match up on that really stand out for you? I mean, two guys probably European or European I'd say I played in Europe for a while uh, Paul Gazzol when I was young we played against each other he was on the Spanish team and I was on the Aussie team obviously banging against him all the time seeing how he went on to be such a great NBA and obviously international player uh, Louis Scholar who I played with in Houston but juniors again battling against him every time was tough I mean obviously the NBA guys I played against Shaq he was huge as a moving mountain he just yeah. pushes you around like you don't even realise it uh, guys like Kevin Garnett, these superstars, you know, 
and playing alongside guys like Chris Paul, you see his work ethic day in day out, and the way like he takes himself as an all star, but he just you know he just composes and stays with the progress, you know, the process of working hard every day. So, you know, I've been around a lot of greats, and it's been an amazing tour. I mean, I couldn't, you know, it, I have to actually think about it really deep when I go, who's your best component because there's so many. Yeah. Now, I mean, do you sometimes watch film from your games and watch the guys you're playing against and go, that's what he did. Now, I can add that to my game. Yeah, you kind of, I mean, I used to quite a lot when I was younger. I mean, as you get older, you kind of realise what you want to do and what you want to be like. But guys like Akeem Olajuwon for me were, were with a dream shake, my fadeaway <laughs> jump shot. I loved it. I mean, that's one thing I always wanted to put myself in that, you know, that, you know, dream move. And um, other bigs like Tim Duncan, you obviously look up to these, you know, great footwork, great players, done it for many years, consistent too. And, you know, they just went about business and did a great job. So, you know, as you go on, you see different players, you like to model yourself a bit on them. Guys like Dirk Nowitzki, you know, he's just, he's still doing it at this ripe age of, I don't even know how old he is. So, but yeah, like you see all these different ones, you, you model yourself a bit on them and you hope that you can mimic what they do to a degree and coming back and playing for melbourne united what's that been like it's been great i mean a bit of a juggling act for me personally because i've come home after being overseas for being overseas for nearly two decades and then uh seeing friends catching up with people it's comes it can be dangerous it comes a bit of a social affair so but um no it's been a good doing a good job of juggling things with that and um yeah really looking forward to this next season coming to melbourne because uh yeah it's It'll be the second season. I mean, I had two years in France, and the second season we won everything. And uh, coming back to Melbourne, I have a good feeling, you know, that things are going to go hopefully in our way. I yep. won't jinx it. <laughs> and I hear you also become a regular again with Monday Night Men's here at Frankston. <laughs> yes, you probably shouldn't mention that to Melbourne team. But, <laughs> but um, no, I have a bit of fun with my brothers. I've been doing that for years. I mean, even when I was in the NBA, you know, I'd come down and have a run with my brothers. When I played in Europe at the highest level, I'd always come down. It's just a good way to... One, stay in touch with where I fell in love with the games with my brothers, and two, have a bit of fun with them because you don't get to catch up. Everyone gets busy in their life, and you know you never make time for each other. And just coming down and having fun, and you know talking a bit of trash, and maybe getting a dunk here or there, or you know maybe not so much nowadays. But yeah, it's it's just a good chance to keep the legs moving and keep everything rolling because at the end of the day, I still love the games. So. Absolutely, I guess finally, I mean. Such great news now with the stadium expansion being confirmed and, yeah. um, you know, a couple of stages to really make this a high-quality, high-performance facility. Yeah. Are you excited about that? It's going to be awesome. I mean, I've been on board with Nathan, you know, rallying the council, talking to them about things and trying to show them that I'm a firm believer in Frankston basketball and I believe that, well, not just Frankston, it's the peninsula, I believe. Like, you've got a lot of kids playing sport along this whole peninsula and, and they look at Frankston as a hub. Hopefully, it can even turn into a bigger thing, and who knows, one day become an NBL team again. And um, I think this facility upgrade is going to be great. You know, there's already the courts are all full every weekend, so there's no doubt that we need it. And for me to get on board and help out in any way possible, you know, I always thought it, Nathan. You know, you need to put a statue of me out the front, <laughs> but he didn't like that one. But I think I believe they're going to do something with the court. And um, yeah, I'll definitely be on board as you know, helping out in any way I can, whether it be an ambassador for the team or or just popping my head into the council to say you're doing the right thing and guys get behind this because I believe it can really help the, the council around here in the area. Well, the, the chance to develop more young players, like the fact we had yourself and Ryan yeah. as teammates at the Olympics, both from Frankston, that's extraordinary, isn't I it? I mean, it's amazing to me. I mean, you, you would never even thought of that, you know, in the Frankston area, there'll be two kids growing up and playing like that alongside each other at the Rio Olympics. I don't, I don't think that's ever happened throughout. I don't even know in other sports or anything, but... Yeah, I have a great time with it and, you know, I've got a, my roots are from Frankston and I'm proud of it and I always tell people, you know, it's one of the best parts of the world. You drive down Oliver's Hill, that's one of the best views around the world. I've been in Barcelona, I've been, you know, in Monaco, I've been everywhere. But you would say they're amazing places, but coming home is, you know, it's where the heart is and where I'll be. I agree 100%. Thanks for your time, no Dave. Worries. You're welcome. Terrific clean, guys. Appreciate that was good. I think it was pretty good actually, it felt good. Yeah, it felt good. Yeah.